Hi, I'm Henry Lee of BlueHeronArts.com. Today we are going to learn a landscape painting. And first of all, I'd like to show you um, an article featured in the magazine uh, called Chinese, published in Hong Kong in 2007. Special collection. And uh, the article is entitled uh, American Chinese Painter Xiao Hui Li. Li Xiaohui in Chinese. Uh, Li Xiaohui is my Chinese name. And the subtitle says, A background in art and archaeology, landscape painting combine humanity and aesthetics. Here are some old pictures. Uh, you might be interested to uh, take a look. Uh, these are my paintings, landscape paintings. Uh, the article also talked about my educational backgrounds in art and archaeology. Um, this one is taken in 1986, before I come to the United States. Um, I was an instructor, a lecturer uh, in Nanjing University after graduate school. Uh, I worked two years uh, as archaeologist. Um, it was uh, Han Prince tomb that we and, um, unearthed, uh, excavated, and uh, the uh, I was holding some uh, um, relics from the tomb. You can see, and uh, this one is uh, uh, in the uh, opening reception of my one-man show, held in November '87 in Seattle, uh, in Leslie Campbell Gallery, and I. Um, have invited my professor, Professor Dahl, and his wife, and also uh, Professor Elizabeth Perry. Uh, in the reception, uh, also uh, other friends, uh, my classmates in the graduate school. And I, was, I also start teaching Chinese painting in uh, University of Washington Experimental College. This is uh, my uh, students in class. And here, okay, the, this one is most more recent. Um, I was delivered a lecture in Pomona College, um, Clement in California. And uh, the students uh, in Asian Study Program, they, in a workshop, they also have a chance to practice. I was standing there. And uh, these two pictures are my landscape paintings. I showed this one earlier in the Dragon Wayne lecture on um, composition of Chinese landscape painting. Today I'm going to uh, demo a uh, special techniques that uh, I did with this picture, this paint, this landscape painting. Um, of the American landscape, the Grand Canyon. The technique we're going to apply today to paint Chinese, uh, contemporary Chinese landscape painting, uh, like the Grand Canyon painting here, is um, the split brush technique. Uh, in broader sense, you can use uh, um, literally broken brush or split brushes, used brushes or cut or trim the brushes like this. Um, but you can also uh, use a new brush like this bare br hair brush to create the split brush effect without cutting uh, anything. Okay, the first brush I'm going to uh, use uh, is a made of a rooster feather brush. It comes naturally uh, with a split, split feather, you know. Uh, it's perfect to create uh, the kind of uh, coarse strokes, the texture of the rock. So I need to s uh, wet the brush and then dry it with a paper towel. You can see it become, uh, still you can see the split tip. Okay, now I'm going to use ink and uh, you can see with, with dark ink, 
I start from uh, the foreground on this side. Um, when you paint landscape uh, on rocks, you need to use the brush very roughly. It's like plowing, you know, against press tip against the direction you're, you're moving instead of dragging, you're kind of pushing. So that's uh, the, the, the way I got this texture. If you drag, it, it will be smooth, not rough like this. You kind of always push the brush like that. Okay, I'm going to work very fast. And the another point uh, I need to uh, mention is that you need to exhaust every load before you reload. So it will give you the dry and wet, um, both wet and dry strokes. You can use uh, charcoal to uh, draw some sketch, but landscape painting is very uh, free, actually. You can uh, always add rocks to make uh, changes. So I usually give me, just you know, do it uh, on blank paper. And also I, I'm looking at this uh, reference painting. so. You will not uh, lose the composition. The American landscape is uh, very dry uh, compared to the Chinese misty landscape. So we use more dry strokes when paint a desert or this kind of rocky mountains. And I can show you the second brush is a, a bare hair brush. Um, so I just use a regular stiff brush or you know you can use a horse hair or um, wolf hair. You can just let the brush split like that or you can uh, again just push a little bit it, it will split. Right. So this brush to outline the rocks You, um, you don't need to completely define, it's about 70% in ink. We will do the rest with color, so, uh, or washes, light wash. So the uh, shading part, of our outline part is about 70%.
that counts the you know the dotted lines. So you, you don't have to do it continuously. Just Try to avoid the uh, the parallel or same mass of rock. You know, just create a rhythm with uh, small or large combination of both small and large rocks. Oh, by the way, this paper is a uh, triple shrine. It's very heavy, thick paper. Very absorbent, but not smear as the single single ply shrine on rice paper. Some artists like to build the mountain from uh, like bricks or rocks, uh, but I like to divide it. Sometimes I do the big mass first and then uh, subdivide it into smaller dimensions or uh, pieces. Uh, so I, I'm working on this uh, close part to make it uh, more detailed. If you start with the detail, you lose, uh, like you concentrate on the trees, lose the forest. Here, you know, if you concentrate each rock, you will lose the mountain. So concentrate on the mountain first. dark part is here and then getting um, more distance. Another um, broken uh, split brush we made, we cut last time when we did uh, the foliages to do the trees. Red brush, but I used it uh, vertically as dots.
Um, let's keep her, go back to work on the rocks. <coughs> go back to the bare hair brush. I add some water to dilute it a little bit. It will be lighter when we go in the uh, more distant distance uh, rock. So dry brush is uh, preferred. You can, you can use paper towel to dry the bottom of the brush. When you modify um, a rock, you can use a very different ink, like if this is dry, uh, dark, uh, in the first place I use light, uh, wet, lighter wet ink to, to modify it, to add on to it, so not every layer the same, we call this accumulate ink technique. When I first visited uh, the Grand Canyon, I was surprised that uh, I don't need to climb the, the mountains. Uh, I can uh, see all the way in uh, with driving. So 
this is a flat uh, terrain, you know, the, and on, on the top of the canyon. Car there. It's very different than most of the Chinese uh, uh, mountains. Use a thirsty brush to create the texture. Now I'm going to work on the, the remote grounds. It's a, a, a bear hair brush. Okay, we're going to use color later to draw the uh, remote, also remote level layers. This is like a 35 miles away from the uh, coast ground.
Okay, almost. I meant to add a little car. I like the Beatles car, you know, the 60s. accident uh, up there, I consider that as a helicopter. So you got a car, helicopter, and uh, I'm going to do a little eagle here, flying eagle. Um, Dry, then we'll wash it with a color. 